Bill Cahoon. We're here at Hammond River Raceway this evening for an evening of racing, and with me is Don Ferguson, the producer of our show. Don, what are we going to look forward to here tonight? Well, tonight's a special race. This only happens here once a year. It's the Bud 100. The 100 laps is going to be comprised of 25 lap feature by the bomber class and 75 laps by the sportsman class to make up a total of 100 laps. So uh, there's going to be two distinct feature races in here this evening. Definitely, as well as the feature, each class is going to have three qualifying races as well as a dash for cash. And the sportsman event will have uh, B main, like last chance race for those that don't make it through the qualifying. So we're going to have uh, most of the highlights of uh, both races then this evening on the program. That's right. We'll get you up to date on everything that's happened as well as talk to some of the drivers. Rob Kirk on the point in car number three. In the 42, it'll be Gary McLean. The 13 is Kevin Esty. John Robichaud in the 33. Tim Bradley in car number five. Okay, I'm here with Larry Somerville, the promoter of the uh, event this evening. Larry, it takes a lot of work to put one of these things together. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, we've been working on this for approximately two months now, and uh, we've got a beautiful night. Uh, that's 50% of the battle, making sure you have nice weather. Not that we never do in St. John. <laughs> but uh, we've got a lot of good cars here tonight, cars from all over. There's cars from Maine right down to uh, Nova Scotia. So uh, I think it's going to be a good, good night. I know that uh, the pit area is quite crowded out there, and there are a lot of interesting vehicles out there. Who's some of the key uh, players that we should be watching for this evening? Well, in the sportsman, in the maritime sportsman class, uh, Brad Mann's always tough. Uh, he's had a rough uh, start. He blew a few motors early in the year, but he, uh, you know, he's good. Uh, Timmy Rogers is strong. There's Paul Lewis, Vinnie Bonner, local drivers. He's tough to beat. And I'd like to thank our own car, uh, the 27 car. You know, we've won six features this year, and uh, we've got a good chance as anybody. Well, that's good. Uh, it's nice to see the local guys right in there at the top of it. Anyway, um, what else is going to be going on here this evening? Anyway. We're run, running uh, the bomber class. Uh, they're mostly street stock cars. There's cars from Callis uh, and as far away as Moncton. Uh, Chris Duncan, Kevin Esty are some of the better ones here in St. John. Gary McLean, really quick. Uh, there's a few from St. Stephen, 25, 30 cars there, so they'll be tough too. Well, I know that the promoting of it uh, around the area has been uh, good, and uh, I expect that you'll have a large crowd here this evening. Yeah, they started coming in about uh, roughly 6.30, so I kind of like that there. Yeah. I had to get over there and open the door early, so that didn't bother me any. And uh, it's surprising. There's a lot of fans uh, from up from Campbellton, Moncton. You know, the, probably 50% of the crowd is from out of town. Bill Cahoon caught up with a couple of the race favorites before the evening got started. Okay, I'm here with Brad Mann in the pit area. And Brad, uh, you're coming from Campbellton. It's a long hike for uh, the race tonight. Yeah, it's a long ways. Uh, we get used to traveling. We travel that road all summer and we run a river glade late Sunday nights and we're getting used to getting home at 2 or 3 in the morning. So uh, we came down a little earlier. We came as far as Moncton last night to break up the trip so we wouldn't be too tired for tonight. You're coming off a fairly successful year in 1992, Brad. Uh, how are you making out so far this year? 1992 was great and we, we won all the big races. This year we had a lot of trouble. Uh, we was taking out three engines. Uh, put us out of the Budweiser 100 in Newcastle. We were the quickest in qualifying and we blew up, blew up in a late practice session. And it turned out to be a defective timing. Like we struck out three engines. It was just a simple thing, but something hard to find. You got to believe electronics and it's just been one of them seasons. Things like that's taken us out. Uh, when we run, we've been running up front with the top cars and we run strong, but when we're broke, we're broke. <laughs> Well, the 1993 season is starting to wind down for you, I know, and uh, what are your plans going to be for the 1994 season? Uh, we're not quite sure yet. We've been approached by a couple of sponsors. Uh, there is a strong possibility we may be moving on to the mass car circuit, getting out of this circuit, and uh, so we can go down and run down in the States a little more, plus in the Atlantic provinces here with mass car, and it'll be something different. Uh, I should know at the end of October, after I have meetings with sponsors and stuff, and it's going to really depend on sponsorship because of being so costly, and uh, if we don't go the mass car route, well, we'll be back strong as ever next season. Okay, that's great then, Brad. Thanks very much for taking the time. We'll let you get back to the car. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm with uh, Tim Rogers from the Salisbury area. Tim, uh, you've got yourself rather a new machine this year. How's it been going so far? Uh, it took us a uh, few months to get it. The bugs worked out, but she's coming around nicely now. Uh, we're doing very well in River Glade. We have first place down there. We got a comfortable lead right now, but if nothing goes wrong, we should be able to pull her off by the end of the year. And the uh, the uh, track itself, you were here last year and had a bit of bad luck towards the end of the race, I understand. 
Yes, uh, we were leading the race late in the race and had a caution and went into turn one and the uh, brakes let go. And that was kind of the end of the night, so hopefully we can turn things around and take it this year. So you're rather eager to get out there and get at it. Yeah, you know, we sure are. Like I said, I think the track owes me one this year. Okay, that's great then. Good luck to you and uh, have a successful one. Okay, thanks a lot. There were three qualifying heats in both the Sportsman class and the Bomber class, with the last chance race for the Sportsman division. The winner of the first qualifying heat in the Sportsman class was Jim McPherson in car 28, shown here taking the checkered flag. In the second qualifier for the Sportsman class, the winner was Paul Lewis in car 62. The third race winner was Les Lamb in car 9. The last chance race winner in the Sportsman division was Chris Brime in car number 10. After the qualifying heats were over, the first and second place finishers in both divisions had a five-lap action autoglass dash for cash, with the winners taking home a little extra cash for their efforts. The winner of the Sportsman class dash for cash was Brad Mann in car 35. We caught up with third place finisher in this heat, local driver Les Lamb, steering car number nine. Okay, I'm with uh, Les Lamb here. Uh, Les, you uh, had a good uh, qualifying heat and uh, tight going out there in the uh, mad dash for cash. Yeah, it was a good first heat there and the dash for cash was a little tight, but we finished her anyhow. A little tough going around the outside. The outside's a little bit separate. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you're looking forward to the feature race? Yes, we are, and it's going to be a tough race. A lot of good cars here. Yeah, there are a lot of good cars here. Well, good luck to you. The winner in the Bomber Class Dash for Cash, another Hammond River driver, Tim Car number five. Bill met with him after his win. Okay, I'm with uh, Tim Bradley from Barnesville. Tim, uh, you had a successful uh, qualifying heat. Second. I got lucky there. Started yeah. first, but I got pulled the outside, so ended up second. Anyway, hung on tough when you get on the outside rim. Yeah, that's right. You had a good uh, dash here. Yep, got first. I uh, thought 33 was going to get by me there. He usually can outpull me pretty good, but I managed to hang on. Ended up first, though. So. Well, congratulations and good luck. Much. Let's bring in the mouth of the Mayor Machi, track announcer Cyril Hall, all the way from Newcastle to announce the starting lineup of the 75-lap portion of the Bud 100 for the Sportsman Class Division. Robert DeWolf on the pole. Jim McPherson outside row number one. Brad Mann, Robbie Halpin in row two. Billy Somerville and Paul Lewis in row number three. It'll be Tim Rogers and Ray Kale in row four. Les Lamb in the nine. The 38 is Paul Dunn. The 40 is Billy McLean. The 66 is Ken Crossway. The 44 is Byron Bartlett. And the one is Vinnie Bonner. Carl Rayburn is behind the wheel of the 71. While Clarence Patlas drives car number 45. Chris Bryan in the 10. Mike Bottle in the five, and Mark the Shark cameraman's in car number 57. So as the cars tighten up, the Budweiser pace car will head back to the garage area, and we'll put them under Steiner's order. Al Robinson will wave the linens this evening here at Hammond River Raceway. And we'll go green three laps away. Three laps to green for the start of the 75 lap feature here at the Budweiser shootout. Robbie Halpin now looks to the outside of Chris Prine's car number 10. Brad Mann, of course, now up right on the rear bumper of car number 5, Mike Swaddle. And DeWolf, the third place car, spins out of turn number 2. Brad Mann now attempts to put the Budweiser Ford Thunderbird car number 45 of Clarence Bottas a lap down as the 19 of Tim Rogers gets loose. And Luke Rogers one more time looks to the outside. Bartlett now in the picture as well. The car number 44. Super battle for that second position. And Bartlett now on the inside. Bartlett tucks the Oldsmobile down. And somebody's got to give. They all make it through the one two turn. And Byron Bartlett has the inside lane through the three four turn. Now, the defending champion showing the way, looking for that second checkered flag. One to go, white flag is up. Bradman, your race leader out of Campbellton. 
About to put the Pennzoil Pontiac across the line to the top finishing position. Final time through the three-four turn. The Camelton driver skillfully weaving his way for the checkered flag. Redman, your race leader. Robbie Halpin will bring it home to second. Byron Bartlett in third. Looks like Tim Rogers in fourth. Car number 44, driven by Byron Bartlett, who finished third, was disqualified for using illegal parts on his car. The overall winner of the two races in the sportsman division was car 19, driven by Tim Rogers of Salisbury. Mr. Rogers finished first at the Brunswick 100 earlier in the summer and finished third here tonight. In the 25-lap final leg of the Bud 100 feature for the Bomber division, the winner was Chris Duncan in car 79. Second place went to Kevin Esty in car 13, and third place went to car 42, Gary McLean. That's it from the Bud 100 at Hammond River Raceway, where we remind you that the last race here will be Sunday, September 12th at 2 p.m. There will be regular racing and a demolition derby. We will take you now to Exhibition Park Raceway for a report on sand drag racing. The sand drags are being held as part of the East Coast Big Rig and Off-Road Jamboree. Let's go up to commentator Dave Stevens as he guides us through this double knockout event. the first time the Lone Ranger's done any sort of stuff like this. He never comes out of the mud. He's going to try the drags here against the awesome Orange. Hold on to your hat, folks, because you're going to see one heck of a fast show here. I think the awesome orange is going to have to go back over and do some tuning up. He's going to fool around with these mud boggers. Would you say the Lone Ranger won that one, folks? This is Fred the Swamp Toy from Skidook. Bill Murray from St. John here. Swamp Toy looks like he's got him, no problem. Swamp Toy takes that run. Okay, we have Claude McShane up to the starting line. He's driving out of the blue two from St. John, New Brunswick. In the other lane, we have Ron Gooden. They're off. Claude got it right off the bat. Down. It gives out of the blue, too. I guess we have the bathtub ready to go. Driven by Andy Beal from Maine. Paul Ferris in the other rig from St. John. Driving the bud. Paul got the jump on the back top. Yes, Paul Ferris takes it away from the jacuzzi bathtub. Okay, Henry Pizer, Tim Lanikin. Okay, modified eight truck drivers, go get in your trucks. You're going to be up next. Modified eight, please get in your vehicles. Modified eight, Steve Stewart, Brent Lanikin, Darren Brown, Jamie Wright, Andrew Lanikin, Neil Boyle, Jerry LeBlanc, Kevin Dobson, Bill Crow. The Suzuki got the Toyota. Jimmy Lanigan takes that one away from Henry. The Reverend Crow, 
racing against the cattle truck. It's the fellow that brought the chickens in yesterday. And the Reverend looks like the Reverend Crow. The Reverend Crow and the Dooley CJ. Okay, we got Jerry LeBlanc in the orange Jeep, Kevin Dobson in the green from the Three Mile Tavern. And they're off to CJ. Oh, that orange one's coming on. Whoa. Kevin takes it, not by much. Hey, the blue Ford comes out top there. That was an awful close race there. I'm going to have to give it to the multicolored Toyota. That's the one where Buddy said he just put the paint can up on the rafters of the garage and drove underneath of it. Now let's see how the plum crazy can do with the awesome oil. And they're off! Something. Something's wrong with the plum. I think he must have a plug in the plumbing system. Bill Murray, Claude McShane, out of the blue too. Billy's running his rig. Works at Springwear. Claude's bouncing from the start. Whoa! Out of the blue too. Billy's going to have to park that truck. He had it over in Building 10. Maybe he better take it back over there. Next truck up to Swamp Boy, driven by Fred Cormier out of Skidduck. There's an odd truck here, so the guy gets a buy. Ron Gooden, John Baldrin are up next. Running out of Dalhousie, John does. The Purple People Eater. Purple people leader was slow out of the hole, but he wins her in the end. Sandy Beal driving the bathtub, the jacuzzi bathtub we call it, from Maine. Your next truck is Tim Lanikin driving the Suzuki. A close one, but the jacuzzi bathtub comes up ahead in that one. Next truck up is the Henry Pizer, the Big Bird. Now, this is going to be a good little dueling match. You got Henry Pizer and Paul Ferris, they've been neck and neck all year long in the mud bog. 
should be a good little race here between them. The two trucks are fairly evenly matched. Two Toyotas. Henry Pizer with the green, Paul Ferris with the black. Paul got Henry off the start. That's it. Paul Ferris. Paul said he gives that truck straight bud. Works great. Steve Stewart in the CJ. It's Dave Brown in the Ford. Whoa, both of them are a little, didn't want to get away, but it looks like the CJ is going to do it. Oh, yes. You got that board wound up, but not quite quick enough. Come on, Reverend, you better snap that motor down quicker than that. Jerry LeBlanc takes that heat. Brent Langell's up the line now. Brent just puts a can of paint in the rafters and drives a truck out underneath of it, and that's what he come up with. Chevy will take that one. Boys, we had a sleeper down there that time. Randy Glacier and Jimmy Keating. Randy's driving the Ford. Jim's in the CJ, and it uh, looks like the Ford's got her. John Baldron, this is a tow truck that he hauls a purple beetle lever with all the way from Dalhousie. And he's got that easily. Stevie Stewart driving the CJ, Jamie Wright in the wild thing. Whoa, we hear a little bit of chirping there from Stevie even. Old Steven got him, Steven Stewart. Which one, fellas? Who won that, Kevin Dobson? You giving that to Kevin Dobson in the green Jeep? Kevin Dobson. Purple people here, and out of the blue, too. She's out of the blue, too. Claude McShane, St. John, New Brunswick, out of the blue, too. It's two years in a row Claude's won this class. He can't be beating the drag. Claude McShane, out of the blue, too. Stephen is in the Jeep closest to the grandstand. Kevin got him at the line there. Steve had a little miss. Kevin Dobson. Paul Ferris driving the big black bud truck. Andy Beal driving the jacuzzi bathtub.
Okay, whoever wins this one is going to be the winner in this class. Andy Beal in the bathtub, Paul Ferris in the bud. It's a pretty good heat, boys. It's a good... Oh, whoa! Andy pulled her right away at the end. She was a tight, close race. Okay, that class finished. Andy Beal from Maine in the bathtub takes first place. Paul Ferris in the bud takes third, second. Tim Lanikin third. This is out of the blue two. Swap toy. Hey, young fella, you go in the yellow, you stay back. Get back away from the edge of the track. Thank you. Whoa! Whoa! What was it? Which one? What truck? Swamp toy? Well, that's it for this week's show. Join us next week as we bring you motocross action from Hammond River Raceway. Let's look now at some of the sights and sounds that were going on at the All Truck Weekend. Thank you.